Now that you've had a lot of practice writing and balancing equations and using the solubility rules, we're going to put all that together and learn how to write complete ionic equations and net ionic equations. Let me show you how. A few definitions first. There are three types of equations you're going to need to be able to identify to do this. A molecular equation, a complete ionic equation, and a net ionic equation. Let me show you an example of each one. A molecular equation is just a typical chemical reaction written on paper. This example has silver nitrate plus sodium hydroxide as the reactants. You might recognize that they undergo a double replacement reaction and on the right side of the arrow you get your products which are sodium nitrate and silver hydroxide. This equation is written correctly and it's balanced. That's a molecular equation. Now a complete ionic equation is when you use your solubility rules and you write every compound that is soluble as an, in the ionic form. Remember ionic compounds when they dissolve in water dissociate or split up into the ions that they're formed from. So if with this example the silver nitrate is soluble it's going to form silver and nitrate ions in solution. The sodium hydroxide is soluble so it's going to form sodium and hydroxide ions in solution. That's the left side of the equation. When the products form Sodium nitrate is soluble. You can look that up in your solubility rules. So it's going to dissociate into sodium and nitrate ions. And finally, silver hydroxide is not soluble. Those hydroxide compounds are precipitates or solids. So I'm going to rewrite the silver hydroxide with a S notation beside it to indicate that it does not dissolve in water. That's the complete ionic equation. The net ionic equation, you're going to cancel out what are called spectator ions. Spectator ions are those ions that don't change during a reaction. They watch the reaction happen but do not participate. So you're going to identify them because they're going to show up on the left and right side of the equation and they're going to look identical. In this example, you see how I've crossed out the nitrate polyatomic ion on both sides of the arrow? and the sodium ion on both sides of the arrow. Those are the spectator ions. Now once you get rid of the spectator ions, everything that's left is your net ionic equation. So in this example, the net ionic equation is silver plus hydroxide yields silver hydroxide. Let's look at this example. This is in your notes. They give you this complete ionic equation. They want you to identify the spectator ions and then write the net ionic equation from this. So remember for those spectator ions, look for the ions that are the same on the left side of the arrow on the equation and the right side of the arrow. Well I see copper plus two here and here, so I'm going to cross those out as spectators. And there's one other set, the chloride ions, there and there. Now what's left is your net ionic equation, so just rewrite it. Sulfate plus barium yields barium sulfate, and barium sulfate is my precipitate. Here's a way to check your net ionic equation. It should be a balanced equation, and it should represent a synthesis reaction. So if you look at this one, sulfate and barium ions make barium sulfate. That makes sense, so I think this is a good answer. Here's another example. Here's the balanced equation. It's a double replacement reaction. And I've already used the solubility rules to figure out which parts of this reaction are soluble or aqueous and which ones are not, the precipitate. We want to take each one of these aqueous compounds and split it up into its ions. Now watch the coefficients here because you've got to remember to include those. Here's what you get for the complete ionic equation. The two coefficient in front of sodium phosphate gives me six sodium ions and two phosphate ions. Then you have calcium chloride, but in the balanced equation there are three of those. So I get three calcium ions and six chloride ions because I multiply three times two. The calcium phosphate product is my precipitate, so I rewrite it the exact same. And finally, sodium chloride is an aqueous compound. There are six of those, 
so I get six sodium ions and six chloride ions. That's the complete ionic equation. Now let's write the net ionic equation. We need to find our spectators. Remember they show up on both sides of the equation. So I see six sodiums on both sides. I also see six chloride ions on both sides of the arrow. So those are my spectators. Now what's left over are the phosphate ions and the calcium ions. That forms the solid calcium phosphate. This is a balanced synthesis equation, so that's a good answer. Let's try another one. In this problem, you're given a word sentence for the reaction. We have to write the molecular equation and balance it. Then we have to write the complete ionic equation and the net ionic equation. I think it looks like a double replacement. Here is the molecular equation. It just needed to be balanced. So I have a two coefficient in front of sodium hydroxide and a two in front of the product sodium chloride. Now to write the complete ionic equation, we have to take those aqueous compounds and split them into their ions. So you're going to get two sodium ions and two hydroxide ions. You get one magnesium and two chlorides. Sodium chloride on the product side is also aqueous, but it has a coefficient of two, don't forget that. So I have two sodium ions and two chloride ions. And finally, magnesium hydroxide is my solid or my precipitate. Find your spectators. I have two sodium ions on each side and two chloride ions on each side. And everything that's left is the net ionic equation. It makes sense. The hydroxide plus the magnesium gives me magnesium hydroxide. So I hope you've started to recognize the pattern. I've left you a few problems on your notes to practice with. Do your best, even if you can't finish them, do as much as you can. Bring them with you next time and we'll see what you got. Have a good one.